Hello folks, welcome to another Darktable Landscapes video. In this one we're going to be processing this shot of Ben Arm in the Trossachs in uh, Scotland. And a fairly straightforward process I think. You can see that the shot is quite dark, that's because I've exposed for the highlights, which if you're new to digital photography and processing in general, is something that you're always looking to do. You never want to clip the highlights if you can possibly help it. Digital sensors are very intolerant of overexposure and very tolerant of underexposure so processing a shot to recover things from darkened areas is a very common practice when you're processing and something you need to get used to uh, so let's get going on this one so the first thing i'll do is the basics i'll do lens corrections and i will do chromatic aberration both of which are just a matter of turning on the module so pretty easy and Let's pop some exposure on. Whoops, I didn't want to click that monochrome. There we go, exposure. There we go. So that's just pulled out the all the detail already. As you can see, the foreground here is kind of a bit of path and then some uh, cleared woodland, something that's unfortunately fairly inescapable in Scotland. Most of Scotland's woodlands are, in fact, commercial plantations as opposed to natural woods. So every so often you'll come to what used to be a nice wooded area and is now kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, scape of trashed trees but there we go that's the world we live in uh, so i'm going to crop these out to a certain extent and i'll do a little bit of light shaping later on to uh, just kind of reduce their emphasis as well so i'm just going to crop the bottom off about there maybe pull this side in just a touch and this side as well so we'll go for a portrait orientation shot okay so let's have a look at what our exposure's done. So about plus seven, yeah, point seven rather. Uh, again, so we're looking not we're looking to avoid clipping. Uh, if we're looking in the waveform, this dotted line here is the clipping line. So our red is just about just about uh, not clipped. So that's fine. I want to reduce exposure in the sky because we've obviously recovered detail here, but we've started to kind of over brighten our sky. So I'm going to right click for a new module of exposure and let's bring out a mask and maybe drawn actually because I may need to limit things. Uh, so we'll pop our mask preview on and we want to exclude our dark tones. So we're going to pull the dark tones up and then soften it off. And you can see that we are in fact, because we're selecting light tones, most of our light tones are in the sky, but there's this particularly sunlit patch here that's still getting uh, the same amount of the same tone essentially it's the same light level so i don't want to affect these we want to keep those as they are so we'll use the drawn part of the drawn and parametric mask we'll use a gradient here and we'll just pop that on make sure it's not blocking off our sky and now we're only applying the mask to light tones above the gradient okay so now we'll feather that as well just to give a more natural transition say 60 picks pop off our preview and then we can lower our exposure. We don't want to go too extreme because then you look uh, ridiculous. You can see that there's this weird haloing effect. You just want to keep it natural, but recover some detail. That's pretty good. Go for sigmoid now, our tone mapper. So just pull up our target black a little bit and then skew a touch. We'll add contrast, I think, with a different tool. And finally, white balance. Uh, let's just use the eyedrop and see what happens. Yeah, it's warmed it up a fair bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to drop it down even more to warm it. I want a nice, this was November, so kind of the end of autumn, really. You can see the colours in the trees here already coming out. And I want to emphasise that warmth uh, with my processing. So now let's hop into Colour Balance RGB. We'll add some vibrance. Add some contrast globally. We'll add some reducing saturation, so more in the shadows, some in the midtones, just a touch in the highlights. And then let's see what we can do with our brilliance grading, where we can just affect our different channels. So maybe drop our shadows a touch for some highlight, uh, some contrast rather. Pop some midtones for a little bit of uh, sunset glow. Drop our highs a little touch. These are very bright here, especially. Yeah. 
and then we'll go to the four ways tab um we'll just add a little touch of color in the highlights this was getting in towards sunset so i'll just add a little touch of color mainly in the clouds you can see if i overdo it it'll look poor so i'll just give it a little touch warmth there we go Bedan is a, a fantastic mountain it's it looks like it's inaccessible but in fact there's a fairly kind of straightforward staircase of stone here and you can make your way up to what's a fantastic viewpoint probably the easiest uh climb for an amazing view you can get in scotland uh, so it's well worth visiting uh, and i will do a processing shot a processing video of uh, of the view from the top at some point as well it's a stunner uh, for, for now i think that's us done with color balance rgb so let's boost uh, those autumn colors with the color equalizer i think there we go and uh, something that one of my viewers reminded me in the comments is that when you're in the color equalizer you can middle click with your mouse to bring up uh, these sliders if you prefer to use sliders rather than the graph view here you can use the sliders uh, which is a little more in line with lightroom if you're coming from lightroom it kind of maybe help you uh, translate if you like uh, so let's go for basically boosting some saturation the reds and the oranges that's too much Let's bring it back there we go be slightly less yeah that's about right so got some pop and we'll do some more color grading with rgb primaries so let's see what we can do i'll probably just shift my green hue a touch and Move my blues down, which again has the the effect of kind of warming the tones. Let's punch up that blue purity a bit. You touch too much on the blue hue there. There we go, looking very autumnal now. And now let's do some some kind of light shaping, if you like. So one of the things we're always looking to do when we're shooting landscapes is to add depth. Uh, the depth that we kind of lose when we take a 3D scene and smush it into a 2D medium. Uh, one of the things we try and do is restore that with our processing and our composition. So uh, what I want to do is kind of darken, say, this side of the mountain or the hill, I suppose it really is. Uh, darken that side, whereas this side's light, and that will just give it some depth. And then we'll also darken down here so that it's not kind of taking our attention too much as it's pretty empty and depressing. So uh, let's go for... Another instance of color balance RGB. And we'll use a drawn and parametric mask. We'll draw the mask first. We'll use a path tool. And not to be incredibly precise because we'll do a little bit of parametric masking. So the sunlight's hitting here. So I don't want to mask that. I just want to, where there's more kind of natural shadow, I just want to emphasize that shadow. And then we'll just tweak it a little bit i'm not too worried about going into the sky because now what we can do is go to our uh, parametric section and we can exclude the brighter tones so we're only we're only going to get these dark tones which is essentially the mountain so i'm just going to drag the dark tones down exclude them and you can see how they're disappearing from the selection feather it off a little bit and then give it some blur some feather there we go and the reason i've used uh cbrbg for this role rather than just exposure is exposure will darken everything whereas color balance rgb or you could also use the tone equalizer if you wanted to i can just control i can just darken the shadows if you like just a touch okay so let's turn off the mask the draw mask the line so you can see what's going on so that's obviously incredibly unnatural but you can get an idea of where the mask's being applied there we go it's maybe too dark Less is more as always so let's just see the effect of that so it looks pretty natural you wouldn't know if you weren't looking for it and you hadn't seen the before kind of view you wouldn't know it really been done it does uh, add some depth so I'll maybe turn that on and maybe just pull in my feathering here just so it's a slightly sharper transition because it's a fairly pyramidal kind of mountain 
So now let's uh, darken down here. And for this one, I will just use a simple uh, exposure, I think, because we just want to darken more or less everything at once. So we'll right click again, grab a gradient. I don't want the effect to be this way, so we'll do that. We'll give it a bit of a curl by right, uh, sorry, by rolling our mouse wheel while hovering over the central line. And we'll drop our exposure. Now I do want to add a vignette to this. I'm not going to go crazy because the vignette will also darken it, but just it will darken this bit more now that we've darkened it. This one as well. Okay, and we'll do another one. Draw and mask again, but this time we're using a lips. And again, we'll kind of make use of this natural lighting coming from the left, and we'll put the vignette over to the left as well. Give it a bit more of a feather. Shift and roll the mouse wheel. And invert it so at the moment it's inside we'll invert it with this uh, reverse polarity button and now we can drop our exposure too much maybe uh, 0.5 you can right click to use text input oh that's point that's positive 0.5 of course so minus 0.5 there we go Just make it slightly larger, give it some feather as well for a more subtle effect. Okay, so we're really drawing our eye now to the brightest part of the image, which is where your, your eye kind of naturally goes anyway. So uh, it's just assisting that kind of thing. Uh, and now we can do some clarity and texture. So contrast equalizer. <clears throat> Roll our mouse wheel down to make our circle bigger and then drag the whole curve up. Yep, it's nice. And then we'll right click for a new instance and we'll just drag either end up doing the right hand end slightly more for fine texture. It's fine. And I've got a little branch here. I'm not too worried about these ones. But this one right on the edge is kind of unnatural, just kind of poking in with nothing to actually support it. So I need to retouch that one out. As it's right on the edge, I will make use of the uh, expand canvas or enlarge canvas tool. Pop that on. Just add a, any percentage to the left. It doesn't really make any difference. And we'll just use black as our size. And then we'll go for retouch. And this should be pretty straightforward. It's essentially, it's this bit, the, the retouch and enlarge canvas has kind of removed our crop, but if I just kind of wipe this out, we should be fine. And it's a very kind of plain area as well, so it shouldn't be anything major. So, oops, it's gonna be grabbing it from over here for some reason. Set it to something more natural like that. And I would imagine that's going to be enough. It's such a simple clone. So we'll keep our retouch on. We'll turn our enlarge canvas off. It's just given us the room to process. There we go. Uh, so the retouch could maybe do a little bit of work. So maybe a, a little bit more feathering, I think, is all it really needs. Maybe better just doing a simple clone rather than a, a heel. No, okay, heel's probably better. A bit dark. There we go. That's got it. Yeah, one of those. You wouldn't really notice it if you weren't looking for it, things, I think. And then finally, we'll do some sharpening. So diffuse or sharpen. Uh, first, I'll use the No AA filter demosaicing preset. Make a new instance and lens deblur. Let's go medium on this one. There's some fine detail, and then finally some local contrast. And I'll just reduce that a little bit with a uniform mask down to sixty percent. That's pretty good. Okay, so here's our before and after. Obviously a very underexposed shot in general, but exposing for the highlights, making sure we're not blowing out any highlights. 
and then we've recovered all that detail we've added a lot of autumn color and removed a, a fending branch shape some light give it some depth and got a nice portrait of Benan. so there's the finished image all framed up i hope you like this one a fairly quick and simple one this time and i think we just recently hit one and a half thousand subscribers which is uh, quite nice in relatively short amount of time but if you haven't uh, subscribed already and you like what you see of dark table please do uh, like subscribe and comment and i will catch you on the next one